Hi, this is going to be a very simple uh, uh, overview of Substance Payload. This is going to show the workflow that most people will use for VRChat models. I will be going over this very simple features that uh, Substance Payload has and what you can do for a model to get it in and out very quickly and to get something that's pretty cool. Um, the only requirement to this is a model that has a correct UV map. It needs to be unwrapped correctly. Uh, there should be no overlapping islands and there should be no islands uh, out of the UV map square. That's the only thing that you, Substance Painter needs to use the smart materials and you will see why after a uh, short amount of time. So once you're in, you click on File, you click on New. Uh, I would suggest keeping it to PBL Metallic Roughness or maybe Unreal 5 if you're not using Metallic. Uh, so maybe for organic models it makes more sense. Document resolution, you can go up to 4K or 2K. Uh, we usually suggest going to 4K and then downscaling the image uh, in Unity then. Uh, but So we can do 2K. Select the file, you select your model, you click on open, click OK. It will import the model. The movement is Alt left click to move around, uh, to rotate, and Alt middle mouse click to move the vision. It's the same thing here. Uh, middle mouse to scroll as well um, first thing you can see is that there's a lot of materials available to you um, but these are normal materials if you if you apply them on the model it will not do something um, you know incredible it will basically apply it in a in a dumb simple way uh, so the the result will be not as expected um, so what you usually you, you usually do is you go over to the smart material list instead. Uh, this is where the materials make use of the UVs that you have. Um, so the first thing we need to do before applying any of it is to go over to the texture set settings on the top right corner. Click on big mesh maps. Uh, output size we want to do 2K. Use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and ID change vertex color to material color apply to all and bake, bake all texture sets uh, so what this is going to do uh, to do this step is basically going to try and capture all the information about your model it can so it's going to find all the seams that you've placed it's going to find all the edges all the crevasses it's going to make ambient occlusion out of this uh, it's going to get the position of edges everything so that way, once you've done all this, it will basically be able to use that information in a cool way, uh, where basically if you do machinery, for example, um, because it knows where the edges are and the crevasses and the position of everything is, it will try to apply um, parts of the masks you will see later, of the material you apply on it, the smart material, in places where it makes sense, depend, uh, depending on you know the mesh and its information. For example, if you apply peeled metal, you can see obviously that it understands where the edges are, uh, where, where the seams are, uh, where the crevasses are, so it will make use, good use of that information. That, that's why it's very important to have clean UV maps because um, if your seams make sense, then it, they will also make sense here. So yeah, unwrapped correctly, I guess, learn to UV map. Um, so on the layers, you now have this if you apply a material on it. You can click on the folder, and within that folder, you will see that it has a ton of sub material. These are masks. So, all of these masks do something different. You can have many, many masks inside of one smart material. You can make your own with the default material and then use smart masks. We'll see that later. Um, if you click on any of them, you will see that it has a normal uh, fill. Uh, like a, a color, I guess, and a, a mask. So if you click on the mask itself, left click on it, you will be able to s click on mask editor. And within that mask editor, you will have settings to change everything. Um, it's it's a bit overwhelming when you see all of these sliders, but it's very easy to just grab anything and to try changing something. Um, so for example, this is the rust course. So if you grab the mask editor and change that, this is in normal mode. So you have this for, what is this, subtract. So it's basically, maybe I think it's height. Um, you also have access to the strength of that 
mask either in total at the top on the mask itself so moving the slider will uh, change this or within the sub uh, masks in the mask so you can see how obviously how it affects everything like this so the mask editor you can change everything I would very highly suggest you grab anything that looks cool to you and then you just move the sliders around until you've got a something that is good for you as a result and then you move on to maybe the other mask or the other map completely because once you do this you know uh, everything is fine um, so for example the grunge or dirt uh, that's the scale so depending on what you do with it uh, it will change completely the scale rotation too if you're not satisfied with how it looks um, it's it's very it's very easy to get something completely different from the thing you first selected um, now on to making your own material because this is a smart material it's easy um, I would suggest I mean you can try it's it's simple you grab anything like this uh, let's say iron uh, it's very standard there's nothing on it it's you can even see the seams so it's like it's not you know fantastic but from that point on you can move on to smart materials uh, smart masks sorry and then that's where it gets a bit more interesting is that you are able to grab any of these options as in uh, let's say edges dirty let's try this um, so it took you know a lot of information but didn't much with it so that's because we have to grab the mask editor and try and use some of these parameters to try and understand what it does so global blur global balance okay global contrast so if this makes use of does it make use of edges i'm not sure uh yes but it's difficult to see okay so if you move the sliders you can now see that it uses it, it uses because it's a smart mask it makes use of the information we baked in earlier in the maps um, and so depending on you know the model if you want something to appear in the edges usually use one of the edge uh, you know there's a ton of them uh, edge and you try some of these things um, again it's all about trying something out you grab something you drop it in the mask it becomes a mask editor you click on it and then you change values until you've got something interesting um, now if you have something uh, if you have let's say a model and you only have one material and you're wondering okay that's cool but let's say I want these specific faces to not be affected by this material or well, it's very easy what you do is you click on uh, well let's say you want this to have this material so what you want to do is to apply a black mask you just click on it and it will select everything a black mask is basically going to say um, I don't want this to be affected by this material specifically but if we click on here polygon fill uh, we can select the faces we want to be able to be affected by that material and so by clicking these faces you now suddenly are affected by the uh, material above you can also by the way do this in UV editor that way you avoid making mis mistakes because substance painter uh, clicks through things so if you do this you also paint these uh, faces under the faces you might want to do so uh, there's probably a way to disable it I'm not aware so that's my bad but you know there's also the UV the mesh fill so if it's a mesh and it's connected to everything else then it's going to connect everything it's you know standard um, but then you might be wondering okay this is cool but why is my or why are these faces still affected by the the first material it's obviously using the normal map well that's because it's you it's over the entire mesh so what you have to do in this case is create a white mask in the opposite of this you want everything else to affect the rest but not this so you go into again polygon fill um, and sorry you click you move that slider into a black value and then you do this uh, oh I think I'm in polygon fill yep you do this and then boom all these spaces are suddenly not affected by the material under it anymore so if you want to have a ton of different smart materials on a single mesh well you can you don't need to have 15 materials and 15 meshes anymore you just literally apply white and black masks 
on the materials you already have existing and then you can do that for as many pieces as you want it's going to be a bit heavy in terms of you know get uh, keeping track track of everything but it will be fine uh the thing to remember is that um if you add something uh to uh above the list it will affect everything above what's under it so it will take basically ownership or um it will overtake what's below it so if you if i do this instead it won't take over the pink if i do this it won't do anything because it's below uh, if i remove if i move the pink above uh you know it takes over everything so you have to be careful about uh what you add and you know keep track of the mask basically um that's pretty much the basics um from that point on you again you mix the values you change things around um it's it's not complex it, it can be complex it can be very complex if you really want to have a very specific look but i think for the basics and the smart materials that are available to most people this will do uh obviously it's different for anime models um this is more complex uh, you have some you know very basic colors you can use you have some uh, materials skin human skin but i don't think you would like to use that um so yeah you either make use of materials and then you add your own smart mask which is a bit more complex it's you can do it but you know it takes a bit more time or you use one of the existing smart materials which are usually very well made and then you change some of the values or you apply more masks to them or you remove ex existing masks to get the look that you want um that's pretty much it you can paint too if you want you can add like a paint layer um let's undo that actually so that i can show you in a more easy way uh normal paint there we go and then water drips there we go okay so what you do is basically once you've got paint uh you can use one of the um smart masks to make use of that paint layer to use that well that you know uh that paint layer that you had and you then well it's very easy to then you know get some effects like this where it's just for this one is oxidation you can use dust surface and then it's very hard to see some but like it's it's very easy to make your own detail by just painting it and then use the correct uh, ma uh, smart mask on top of it um and it's maybe no uh yeah it's you, you can you can do a lot it's very it's you know it's a complex software so you, you can go in depth very easily um so once you've got something you're really happy with uh you just you know click on file at the top left actually one thing before if you want to if you have changes to make to your model you just click on edit project configuration click select and then you you just go select that uh model again it's it's very easy you just need to import it bake maps again once you import it you really need to bake mesh maps and texture map again because your uv if your uv is changed you need to redo it um obviously um so then you go to export textures and then what you do is you like yeah you basically select the material you you, you changed uh you select the type of the file type of the images the textures you choose the uh, output resolution so usually 4k and then you bake you scale down to 2k within unity itself uh in this case for example we would only export material one and you click export and this will output uh, all the maps that you need and then uh, you just use those uh, textures within unity in the standard shader or uh, standard shader with roughness or reroll standard i mean there's a couple choices and they're pretty much all the same uh, it's just about you know being able to use all the masks that you've created you won't get all of them uh, usually emissive scattering specular uh, you won't see uh, you see ao normal height metallic roughness base color um, but yeah that's pretty much it uh, once you've done that you've got everything in unity um, make sure to please scale down your textures it's important for file size but um, uh, 
just for people, not just you, it's not the model size people have to download, but also crunch compress your textures. Uh, it's, good, it's just going to make, make it easier for people to, you know, see your model faster. Uh, if everybody just uses 4K and compress, then, you know, we have to uh, download 100 megabyte model every single time. Uh, that's the basics. If you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can ping me in VRChat main Discord or anywhere you can find me. Now I'm trying to help, uh, but you know I'm. That's all I know, pretty much. So if you want to know more about any of the steps, I would su uh, suggest going to YouTube uh, or any of the forums and asking if they're there or finding a video tutorial on it uh, because it's going to be any much better than anything I could you know explain to you myself. Uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. And uh, have fun.